Now, one of the things that I've really appreciated about the M1 Mac Mini is the fact that this small investment has given me so much time back. But one of the things that I wanna to discuss today is actually making a smaller investment to get a larger return. Let's get into it. What is going on, you beautiful humans? Welcome back to the channel. And hey, if you are new here, welcome. Now I'm going to continue to update the community here with all of the M1 Mac Mini and really just the M1 uh, Silicon experience that I've been having. I am going to do an entire overview on the Mac Mini. I'm sure you've watched plenty of videos, but today I really want to update the community on all of the testing that is happening. Gaming is definitely coming. I'm working on that right now. But when it comes to video and photo, and when we are looking at the RAM and the hard drive, the space, and looking at the Mac Mini coming in at $699 US to have a machine that is capable of cutting this video, scrubbing through an AK timeline, really. But here's the thing, I, I need you to think about the $699 price tag as a starting point to bump yourself up to really $899 US dollars. And here's what I mean getting as much RAM as you can afford. And, and what I wanna do is make sure that none of you are blowing out your budgets to oblivion to where you're not gonna recover. If you gotta mow some lawns, if you gotta shovel some snow, if you have to cut back on some non-essentials around your house or you know going out if anybody's really going out. But when it comes to the investment that you're making in this Apple Silicon, if you are someone who is using RAM intensive applications, the M1 is so efficient, but what I can tell you from all of my testing, and I did a video on 8K uh, video, like cutting that video, rendering it, and it actually does work, but I do have 16 gigs of RAM. Yes, you're seeing that happening on the base models, but what I can tell you is I'm using that RAM. I am utilizing it to its fullest. So that being said, when we look at the RAM, that's where I think you should make your first investment if you can afford that extra couple hundred dollars. Because when we look at the hard drive space, that's where we can save some money. And here's the thing, before we get too deep into this, if you're someone who is cutting 8K uh, raw video all the time, transcoding it, rendering it, you might not be working on an M1 or you may be in a different sphere than I, plan on working in the next several years. But if you're someone who even is cutting 4K, 10-bit 4K, and using various codecs, it is nice to actually have that extra RAM, even though the, the applications are very efficient, at least the ones that are um, designed by Apple right now and those that Adobe is still working on uh, to become efficient and being able to play well with uh, the Apple Silicon and the M1 specifically. But what I will tell you is that as someone who has edited a lot of video for years on external drives like this, SSD drives, they work well, they're very efficient, they're portable. It's great if you're doing client work, something that you can hand off to someone you're you're working with so you could hand this off and have all of the raw footage in it. And I did a video on editing on an external hard drive, uh, specifically at SSD, and I will link that up. But in Final Cut Pro, and really any NLE, you should be able to have all of your raw footage on here. And for Final Cut Pro specifically, having your bundle, your library, as you're working in Final Cut Pro. So that means that Final Cut Pro still exists on the internal hard drive. However, all of the raw footage and everything that you're working with and working on is happening on the SSD. Now I do have several of these drives. I have the Samsung T5. I also have one from a SanDisk and these are both read and write speeds of around 540 to 550 megabytes per second. However, we're gonna be talking about what these benchmarks really look like and these advertised speeds. So I'll talk to, talk to you a moment uh, about that because I also have a faster drive. So these are USB uh, Type-C, also a USB A 3.1, whereas the Extreme SanDisk, this bumps up to still USB Type-C. So using that Thunderbolt connection in the back of my Mac Mini, however, this doubles the read and write speed, relatively speaking, because this is an NVMe uh, drive in here. And so it's, it's a faster drive and we'll talk about that. But again, we're talking about advertised speeds and I'll actually talk to you about why I, I made this investment, but I still use these as well. 
Now, of course, the internal drives in these computers are wicked fast, and you are certainly going to get the best performance because you won't really have any bottleneck happening from an external drive. So that video that I did, and I'll link that up, where I literally scrubbed through, cut 8K and 4K footage in that timeline, it wasn't transcoded, there was no um, optimization of that footage at all, and it took two hours and 27 minutes to render it from raw to be able to post on YouTube. And that was just a two minute clip. Now I did something kind of, I think kind of silly because honestly, if you're cutting that kind of footage, as I said before, and really working with it and you're using an SSD. So I did a little test and I tried to render the same timeline, same time. I didn't change anything. And I, this thing took over 11 hours to render. I had to leave it overnight and then came back and it was still just as I was coming back to the computer, it was just about to finish rendering. So over 11 hours on an external SSD, it didn't fail, it, so it didn't crash, it didn't overheat, the computer kept going, the SSD was, it, I mean, it, it stayed connected, so nothing, there were no issues. And I was actually most surprised by that, but if you're someone who is like, yeah, I'm gonna be editing this type of footage and putting it on an external drive like this, and then I'm just gonna leave it overnight, I'm not recommending that, and that is really like an outlier use case. But of course, moving over to a more realistic timeline and what I've been doing for years is my own 4K footage, and it was a 17 minute timeline, cut, corrected, LUTs, transitions, and so that editing took about six minutes and 11 seconds on the internal drive of the Mac Mini. However, on the Samsung T5, it took about eight minutes and 32 seconds. So of course, when you look at it like that and you think like, all right, just another couple of minutes to, to render this and, and have this you know, work for me to save a bundle um, because obviously we know that the storage with Apple is at a premium and to put that, that more toward the budget of the RAM, I think two minutes is reasonable as far as the efficiency is concerned. And like I said, the 8K raw footage I mean, that is a complete outlier. You're doing completely different kind of stuff and you're probably not doing it on a Mac mini. And you probably have several terabytes of internal storage anyway. And of course, segueing over here to the advertised faster drive of the SanDisk Extreme and having double read and write speeds, really what it came down to is a 28 second savings of our render time. So the thing is, is that that might not mean that much to you. And when it comes to making these purchases, right now there's a ton of sales and these two drives are within anywhere from 10 to $30 of each other. I do recommend at least at a minimum, a terabyte drive, but getting these um, anywhere from 129 to 139 US. And so, I mean, I remember paying twice that for the T5 when it first came out. So you're going to look at a, a 20 to $30 difference between the two. And of course, putting it into perspective, when you're transferring from the internal drive to these external drives, you'll notice a bit of a bump. And you know, like I said, same thing with transferring between these drives. That's where you're really going to see those advertised speeds. However, when it comes to rendering, I was getting like a peak read of around 125 and a peak right of about 183 or so on the extreme because there's a bottleneck happening. So you have these very fast cars on a highway and able to go very fast, but as you're going through the lanes and paring down and kind of crunching down and putting that data, putting the cars through those lanes, you're gonna have a bit of a slowdown. So you have to ask yourself realistically, is it worth the extra money? Now for me, the reason why I wanted to go ahead and invest in this faster drive was the fact that you can still use these SSDs to record externally on other devices, cameras, and so to be able to have the ability to have a read and write speed of twice that of the T5, although the T5 is gonna be just fine. And of course there is a T7 that's equivalent to this extreme, but I'm just telling you that if things are really tight as far as the budget's concerned, I, I edited on this T5 for years and it has held up quite well. And then of course, building on the internals just really quickly in that the T5 has the SATA, again, very responsive and the operating temperature. So those thermals 
per my infrared thermometer, I was getting anywhere from 25 to 30 degrees Celsius when it came to just that render. And it sustained that for the longer render um, as I was watching it for like hours. It didn't really go um, too much above that. However, with the extreme and the NVMe drive that's in there, you're going to expect a higher operating temperature. And those are the things that you might see in reviews that the, there is, these things do get hotter. And of course, I was getting somewhere in the neighborhood of around 40 degrees Celsius. And so for those of you who understand drives, you might think like, well, I don't know if I want that to be sustained and even going higher. Some folks have even gotten that to go higher. And does the longevity of the drive, is that reduced because of those thermals? And those are some things that you might wanna consider. However, I did make the investment and I think it's a good investment. And of course, SanDisk does actually come, I believe they are coming with a five-year warranty um, as far as any data loss or replacement or anything like that. So for me, it, it's kind of in peace of mind, but this T5, I've been rocking it for at least the last couple of years with no issues. All right, you may have some questions. And of course, those of you that already have machines that may only have the eight gigs of RAM, I'm not necessarily saying send it back, but just understand that I am noticing a lot more efficiency with 16 gigs of RAM based on the other reviews that I'm seeing on those base models. That is my use case. That is what I'm seeing. This isn't just pure benchmark. So hit me up below. You know where I'm hanging out, either here on, on YouTube or I'm also hanging out on Twitter. So follow me over there. You go out there and do those things that matter. You keep rocking the faces. I'm going to keep creating some more value here, some more M1 content for you. And I'm going to be getting to some gaming here. So you go do the things and I'll catch you right back here on the next one.